Okay. I'm going to just have a linear. I don't know if you can see from there. Okay. 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 I was, I was thinking, oh, that's fine. Let's play. Heavenly Father, we have come to the final hour. We just pray for the guidance of your spirit now as we seek to look into history to understand something concerning the fulfillment of prophecy. And we also want to see what's to come. Lord, we are truly thankful for the sure word. Truly, Father, we don't have to go to palm readers or crystal balls or people that read the sky and we don't have to do all that, Lord. We have a sure word of prophecy. Please bless us as we look at this word. Please instruct us. Please help us to understand what's taking place and how much time we have left before the predictions of your word come to pass. Please bless us now and abide with us for we ask these things humbly in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Okay, going to be a short study. Um, as I said, Brother Kevin, we got a sure word of prophecy. So we don't have to guess about what's to come. The Bible is crystal clear. Crystal, crystal clear. It's going to end. Yes, yes, yes. And by looking, at, by looking at, at the events around us, we can see where we are actually standing in the stream of time. We can see where we are standing in the stream of time. We are actually told in last day events, do you know we're told that the Sunday movement is making its way in darkness? It's in darkness in the, in, in the sense that it's, it's, it's not so much in the open, it's behind the scenes. We are told that the Sunday movement is making its way in darkness. The leaders are concealing the issue and those who unite with the movement do not themselves see whether the undercurrent is tending. So she's saying there are men that are actually uniting with the Sunday movement. Yes, it's underground, it's undercover, but some who are uniting don't themselves see where is this whole thing going? They don't really understand. They don't really understand. So what we're actually going to be looking at, as I said, the show word of prophecy. Now, Peter says we have a show word of prophecy, that we do well, that we take heed as to a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in our hearts. So who is the day star that must arise? It's Jesus, right? Jesus must arise in our hearts. Now, I want us just to see something very quickly. Then I want to ask you a question concerning something, and maybe you will be able to help. First, let's do this. Come with me to 1 Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. It's going to be speaking in the same light that we're speaking. 1 Thessalonians 5. I want us to read verse 4 and verse 5. Verse 4 and verse 5. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 4 and 5. It says, But he brethren, Paul speaking, actually, but, sorry, sorry, sorry. The context, in the context Paul's referring to is the second coming. Because chapter 4, verse 16, he says, The Lord shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, with the trump of God. And then he says, The dead will rise first. And then he actually goes on, but in verse, verse 1 of chapter 5, he says, But of the times and seasons, brethren, you have no need that are right unto you. So he's actually referring to the times and seasons, those things that are to take place before Jesus Christ comes. And then he says, Verse 4, but ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. So question, if he says that the day is not going to take you as a thief, is it possible that it will take other people as a thief? Yes. yes. Now what, what distinguishes between someone who is caught as a thief or if Jesus is coming catches them as a thief and someone who is coming does not catch as a thief? Now remember, when a thief, when a thief catches you, he catches you twice. You say, what do I mean he catches you twice? Not really catches you twice, but there's two catchings in a sense. You say, what do I mean? There's the, thank you. The first one when he catches you is when you're unaware, you're sleeping, he breaks in the house. You're not aware that he's stealing. And then when you wake up, you realize now a thief was here, but it's already too late. So it is actually, for you, there's a second catching because he was there already, but it only dawns on you when you start seeing the things gone, then you realize something, uh, something, yeah, there was a thief here. Yeah. 
So Jesus come in as a thief is twofold. One is the close of probation and then the second come in. Close of probation. Now, what I'm saying is as God's people, the close of probation shouldn't catch us by surprise because we know it's linked to the Sunday law. So when we see the Sunday, we know, okay, our probation is about to close now. So it shouldn't catch us. But nonetheless, will the Sunday law catch some advances by surprise? Yes, it will. It definitely will. Yes, 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 de definitely. So what I'm saying is that the coming of Jesus as a thief is actually twofold. It's close of probation when he leaves the most holy, and it's also the second coming, also the second coming, right? But what distinguishes, look at verse 5, what distinguishes between the two groups? It says, ye are all children of the light. Oh, thank you. You are all children of the light, that's prophecy. Children of the day, we are not of the night, nor of darkness. So that means the, the, the only way Jesus is coming, whether close of probation or the second coming, doesn't catch us by surprise, we have to be students of prophecy. If you fail to study prophecy, there's a possibility you're gonna be caught by surprise. You're gonna be caught by surprise. You're gonna be caught by surprise. Now what I wanna just introduce to you, or maybe, I don't know if I should ask the question about Matthew 24, but let me introduce something to you. I'm gonna write it on the board because I believe it has to do with prophecy. But I'm gonna share a quotation in volume eight, page 307. What I'm gonna say is that prophecy is linked with history. History and prophecy are linked. You know why I say that? When the Bible prophesies of something and it comes to pass, what does, what does that now become? It's history, right? Because now it's already taken place. Babylon, history. Medo-Persia, history. Greece, history. Rome, history, right? Obviously, now we're looking for the second coming of Jesus. That's prophecy. So they're closely linked. So we're actually told in volume 8 of the Testimonies, page 307, we are told we are to see in history the fulfillment of prophecy. So what are we to see in history? The fulfillment of prophecy. So that means there was a historic event. I don't know if you'll know about this historical event in 1944. Nine, now, none, I don't know if anyone, <laughs> anyone, <laughs> no one. Okay, has anybody heard of this? Britain? Okay, have, have you heard of it, my sister? Yeah? <laughs> Sorry, it's <a> yeah. <laughs> Amen. It has to do with finances. Do you know anything more? Amen. Do you know any we are to see in history the fulfillment of prophecy? And then we are to understand the progress of events in the motion of the nations for the final conflict. So I believe that Britain would con this, this Britain would conference, I believe, is gonna play a key role or not gonna. We're going to prove in this study, they are, by the way, let me say this, Bretton Woods Conference gave birth. They gave what? Uh -huh. Maybe you would know. Do you know? Uh -huh. <laughs> Do, now, what I'm going to say is Bretton Woods Conference actually gave birth to the World Bank linked to the International Monetary Funds. Now, I believe that this, this, this movement, Bretton Woods, just after the World War, actually there was a conference that took place where the Allied nations came together. And the purpose of them coming together was to form a global or an international, a global world economy. But did it happen in 19, 1944? No, it did not happen. Now what I'm gonna suggest is this. If we're gonna understand what Ellen White says in Lost Events 125, that the Sunday movement is making its way in darkness. If you wanna understand the Sunday movement, which he says is making its way in darkness, we're gonna have to understand something before we understand the sun. We have to understand money. Yeah. We have to understand money. You say, why is that? Is the Sunday movement evil? Yeah. 
Yes, that calls down the unmingled wrath of God. It's the epitome of evil. And what is the root of evil, First Peter 6.10, the love of money. So if we're going to understand the Sunday law, then we have to first understand money. Because the money is linked to the Sunday law. It is linked. It's linked, friends. It's linked. Now, question. Let's look at Revelation 13. If you don't believe me, let's go quickly. We know the verse. Revelation 13. Is the Sunday law linked with money? Revelation chapter 13. Yes, our buying and selling. Revelation 13, verse, uh, uh, let's start in verse 16. Revelation 13, verse 16 and 17, it says, And he calls it all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and born, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead, that no man, keep, there's, there's the money part, that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. So you see very clearly that the Sunday law, the national Sunday law, or the mark of the beast, MOP, is clearly linked. It's clearly linked to money. It's clearly linked to money. So question, friends, if there's going to be a Sunday law mark of the beast, must there be a, a system, a financial system where you can control everybody's buying and everybody's selling? That no one can spend a hundred rand, a twenty rand, a ten rand without the international monetary fund knowing how much you spend, when you spend it, how you spend it. Do you know what I'm speaking? You might sing conspiracy. Yeah. We're going to hear it just now from the horse's mouth. And then the lawyer is going to come in to try and backtrack and undo what that brother sold. It's too late. Too late. Too late. Too late. So what I'm suggesting that we need to understand something about Bretton Woods. About, because I believe Bretton Woods gave birth to the World Bank and International Monetary Funds. Now, what I want us to do before we get there, let me just read one quotation, then I want to ask a question. One quotation, um, Ellen White says, Desire Ages is just a reiterating of what we read in Revelation 13. She says, In the last great conflict of the controversy with Satan, those who are loyal to God, I would say commandment keepers, will see every earthly support cut off. Now, it's very interesting. She doesn't say some earthly support. She says every earthly support. So that means there, there must be some kind of system in place that when we don't want to come along, every earthly support can be cut off like a kick of a finger. Everything's gone. Everything's gone. It says because they refuse to break his law in obedience to earthly powers, they will be forbidden to buy or sell and will be finally dec uh, decreed that they shall be put to death. So it's very clear where we are heading, right? We're heading to a time where we will, all our earthly support will be cut off then. Actually, when that happens, we can't buy or sell. No way you can buy or sell. So now, before I get there, we're going to watch some videos, right? Some of the videos is a bit lengthy. Don't think we're rushing. We still got some time. Some of it's a bit lengthy. And what I'm going to say, these men know how to speak so that you can start yawning. You know how they speak. Yeah. They throw words in that your mind, you, you, yeah. you, you what's yeah. going on? They, they, they speak with all these different, now a common man sitting there, you don't know what's going on. So some of them use that big terminology and then there's some you can get it very quickly. So there's one man that uses some, it's almost boring, you can almost sleep while he's speaking, but he makes a point, even though it's a bit lengthy, but at the end he makes a point, which I believe is linked to the Sunday law. I believe it's linked to your money controlling you. Now before we get there, I just want to ask a question very quickly in Matthew 24. Come with me to Matthew 24. Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24. Now, friends, while you turn into Matthew 24, I'm going to say, I'm going to suggest that, and then I'm going to prove it by God's grace. Now, that's why I'm coming to Matthew 24. Let's just say I'm a time setter. What? I'm going to write the year 2022. I'm going to say that 19, 1944, the dream is going to become reality. 2022. The dream from 1944. You're going to see. I don't know whether it's going to be full blown, but I guarantee that the dream starts to begin to flourish from 2022. I'm going, I'm going to show you what they say. 
And then, very interest friends, like you, you, you cannot, you cannot, I, I don't know what word can I use. You cannot, I don't know how to say this, but what I'm trying to say is that at the same time that their vision is coming to pass in 2022, and we're gonna see what is their vision just now, unbelievable that in 2019 it was voted that a Sunday law, you hear what I'm saying? A Sunday law, not as yet linked to worship, a Sunday law where everyone's off from work in the entire Europe. Everybody, no one works on Sunday completely. 2009, 2019, it was declared. And we're going to show you 2022, all of Europe are keeping Sunday. Day of rest, it's just a day of rest, not yet linked to worship. That means it's not the mark of the beast. Yeah. It's not the mark of the beast. But what I say, it's one step close to the mark of the beast. So to me, it, I, was, I found this interesting. All this information yesterday, it just dropped. I said, thank you, Lord. And what you are showing me as, the, this, this is flourishing. The vision of Bretton Woods. Look at Europe. Look at the deal that they made in 2019. And guess who's behind that deal? You are, all right, it's the papal system. But did Ellen White warn us about a group of, not the people, but a group of a system, on a system, it's an it's a entity that she says that they're going to be the reason for being a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation. No, it's, 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 no she mentions it by name. The unions, the unions were behind this push in Europe. And obviously what the Catholic Church what the Catholic Church, what the Catholic Church. Now, we're in Matthew 24. Matthew chapter 24. I want us to read Matthew 24. Okay, can someone read for us? I'm not going to read all the verses now. We can all have turns to read. Matthew chapter 24. Can someone read for us verse 33, 34? No, no, I'm so sorry. 32, 33, and 34. Yes. Now then a parable of the fig tree. When his branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves, ye know that summer is nigh. Okay, so when we see when we see a, a, a tree putting forth leaves, you know summer is nigh. That's natural, right? So what can we learn from that para carry on? So likewise, ye when you see when you when ye shall see all these things. Know that it is near even at the door. So, in other words, when I see the signs, I can know Jesus is coming as near, how near? Even at the door. And remember, what does it mean to be even at the door? The next verse, it means that's the final generation, right? Next verse. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. So, this generation doesn't pass till all these things be fulfilled. So, yeah, yeah. Final, yes, final generation, final generation. So my question is this, friends. According to Jesus, can I know for a certainty when he's coming as eminence? Yeah. Uh, clearly. Yeah. Now, can someone help me harmonize this? I, I want you to help me harmonize this. So Jesus is saying, I can know he's coming as near, how near even at the door. What does that mean, final generation? Mm -hmm. All right? Now, I need your help now. I'm going to, I'm going to, it's not a trick question, but I just want to see what do the saints think on the point? All right? You remember what Ellen White says. And what I'm going to do, I want us to read what Ellen White says and what Jesus says. There seems to be a contradiction here. But is there truly a contradiction? That's why I'm saying I want your help. I'm going to read. Can someone read for us? Can someone read for us verse 36? Because we are talking about knowing Jesus is coming. How near? Even at the door. Now, can someone read for us, please, verse 36? Then I want to read a quotation in early writings. So, Jesus says, No man knows the day, nor the hour, but my Father only. Now I'm reading a quotation, then I want you to comment. This quotation is found in early writings, page 14. Ellen White speaking, she says, Soon. We heard the voice of God like many waters, which gave us the day and hour of Jesus' coming. The loving saints, 144,000 in number, 
knew and understood the voice, whilst the wicked thought it was a thunder and an earthquake. When God spoke the time, he poured upon us the Holy Ghost, and our face began to light up and shine with the glory of God, as Moses did when he came down from Mount Sinai. Okay, after the seven plagues, amen. But I'm saying now, how, how do we harmonize this? Yes, but uh, yes. I think this verse is telling us that we cannot specifically say on 21st of January, 2017, yeah. Jesus yeah. is coming. Mm. But we can know the events when they are near. So we, can, we cannot have a specific date, but we can have yes, the yes. events. Amen. Thank you, Brother Pada. Now, I, I, Dang, now that's I'm going back to Brother Kevin. But Sister White says that soon we heard the voice of God like many waters which gave us the day and gave us the hour of his coming. So my question is... That time was not necessary to know the day and the hour at that time. Okay. Was, was saying, yes. Right? Yes. This year now that the, when she's talking here, yeah. must remember the people have gone through a great tribulation. Yeah, okay. And to them, to the chosen, the okay. <laughs> no, you're right. You're on the right track. You're on the right track. You're on the right track. But I'm saying, how? how you, you're right. But I'm saying, like, how can you give? That, that is true. But but we, we want some a satisfactory answer. That is right. But but how, how will we harmonize this? Because someone would say, but you you defending your prophets. You're defending your prophet now because you say now at th that Jesus doesn't say at what time. He just says, no man. Now you're defending your prophet. So how, how, would, we, how, would, we, how would we harmonize these two? They almost seems like a con from an outward view, it seems there's, oh, there's a contradiction. But how, how, would, we, how would we harmonize it? <laughs> yes. Okay? Yeah, no, I, 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 I'm, not, I'm not disputing that. I'm not disputing that. that, that, that and also, the, the sign is, when we pray about our first into the heavens, we see a cloud of our first. Yeah. We, we'll know it's, it's God. Yes, no, that I agree with. I fully, I'm in full agreement of that. But what I'm saying is that there seems, yeah, the scripture is saying one thing, and then Sister White seems to say something else. So, how do how, Yes, yes. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to give one more chance. I'm going to give Brother Dylan a chance. Yes, yes. Okay, that's a good try. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. It's a good try. It's a good. Okay, last chance. <laughs> okay, but I see you on the corner again. All right, Brother. Yes. Yes. Okay. You know the, 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 the words and the events. Yes. So by faith, okay. you will know. But now, Kevin, she says, say yes, but she, yes, but yeah, it doesn't say by faith the year. <laughs> it says they are uh, the day and the hour. So thank you. All right. All right. Amen. I, 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 I'm in full. I'm, I, I agree. That's true. That is true. Okay. <laughs> All right, let, let, yes. Yes, okay. <laughs> okay. What I mean by faith, if yeah. we go to jail. <laughs> yes. Yeah. The unbeliever, yeah. he won't believe that Jesus is coming, even mm. though he sees all these things. Yeah. He doesn't even know what his word is. Yeah. yeah. But we that know the truth in yeah. the word of God, yes. we know when, as Jesus said, when you see all these things, yeah. you must know what the sign. Yes. Yeah. Okay, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to read from James White first. Because James White had to meet us. It's his wife that said it. <laughs> so he had to meet it. <laughs> so he had to write out an answer for this de to defend his wife. <laughs> so he had to write it out. Then I have to still check him with the prophet. Because he's not infallible, right? So I'm going to check him with Ellen White on her explanation of what this verse is saying. So I'm going to read first James White. And what I'm going to suggest, James White says it like this. Actually, James White says, 
that and he has he has a, a good strong point and then obviously i don't just take his point what ellen white says affirms what he's saying is correct but this is james white's argument james white says no man make it known the day nor the hour make it known so no man make it known no angel make it known not even jesus make it known but god only then you can find harmony now I don't know if you're understanding the point. If you're going to understand it like that, then you can understand. What, what, what he's saying is that no man can reveal it. Thank you. No angel can reveal it. No, not even Jesus will reveal it because he knows it. But it's God's mystery. He himself will reveal it. I don't know if you're understanding. Yeah. You see, because you said even Christ knows it, but yeah. won't reveal it. Yes, yes. It's not that he no, he knows it. Because he's God. Yes, he knows everything. He knows everything. Actually, she's, there's a, the quotation says that it's not for him to reveal it. It's not for him. It's for God to reveal it. So he doesn't take that prerogative. He, he leaves it with the Father. Yeah. So let's see what James White says on this. Let's see what he says. So this is James White. You'll find this on that disc, that Ellen White disc uh, with the writings of the pioneers. It says, but the day and hour, no, can you see what he says? He is not changing the Bible, but he's going to give you the reason why he quotes it like this. But the day and hour, no man make it known. Neither the angels, which are in heaven, neither the son, but the father. So no one can reveal it except the father. This is the correct reading according to several of the ablest critics of the age. In other words, Bible scholars, the world... Sorry, sorry, the word, no, because in your Bible it says, but the day and hour, no man no. knows. Yeah. But he's, now he's explaining the word no. The word no is used in the same sense, yeah, that it is by Paul in 1 Corinthians 2 verse 2. Paul says, for I am determined not to know. That make means known. make it known. Anything amongst you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. Yeah. Men will not make known the day and the hour. Angels will not make it known. Neither will the Son, but the Father will make it known. As a now, now you can you see your harmony now. Uh, that's how I understand it, right? Now let's check his answer. Let's check it with Ellen White in Desire of Ages now. Let's check his answer if it's correct. Ellen White speaking now. She says, but the day and hour of his coming, Christ has not revealed. He stated plainly to his disciples that he himself, take note, he himself, does it say, doesn't know, could not make known the day or the hour of his second appearing. He could not, it doesn't say he did not know, he could not make known the day nor the hour of his second appearing. Had he been at liberty to reveal this, see, he wanted liberty to reveal it. Why need he have ex uh, exalted them to maintain an attitude of constant expectancy. And then she concludes in the final blue words, she says the exact time of the second coming of the Son of Man as God's mystery. So she's basically saying the same thing as James White. Jesus is not given to him to reveal it, but it's God's mystery, he would reveal it. So it's in harmony with what James White says. So it's very clear that as much as we can read Matthew 24, verse 37, it's not saying we would never know the day and hour. It's just saying that we can't reveal it. God will reveal it. And when he reveals it, there's no need for you to go tell anybody yes. because everybody's case is decided. Oh. And those who hear it are the righteous. The wicked hear thunder and earth. They don't really understand. So, yeah. So it's very, very clear. Very, very clear from inspiration. Now, how much can we know about the second coming of Jesus? We cannot know exact day and hour while his probation is open. But can we know when it is very near, even at the door? Yes, we can know that. We can know that. We can know that. Now, what are answers to do? Yeah, I'm going to actually, let us look at this. Let us look at this. Let us look at this. I want us to have a look and just see, and just see what is coming in the pipeline. Let us just have a look. Now this is the, manage, the managing director of IMF. IMF, that's the International Monetary Fund. 
However, before I make you listen to her speech, this is the meeting that they had, October 15, 2020. Before I make you listen to her speech, she's actually going to mention in a speech the Bretton Woods Conference. But before we listen to her speech, I want us first to see what was the mission of the Bretton Woods Conference. Let's see what was the, the mission. It says here, this is Wikipedia, Bretton Woods Conference, right? It says here, the Bretton Woods Conference, formerly known as the United Nations Monetary and Financial Conference, was the gathering of 730 delegates from all 44 allied nations at the Mount Washington Hotel, situated in Bretton Woods, New, Ham New Hampshire, United States, to regulate the, take note, international, monetary, and financial, what's that keyword? Order. What does international mean? Doesn't it mean global? Global. So what was the purpose of Bretton Woods? To get a what? A global economic or financial order, a global economic order, as that Revelation 13, 17, that no man can buy and sell except he has the mark. Must there be a new global order for the Sunday law to come? So their mission was to set the stage for the Sunday law in 1944. I don't know if the date's there. Yeah. Or this, okay, it says the conference was held from July 1st to 22, 1944. All right? Now, what I never read, okay, it's fine. It says agreements were signed that after legislative, can't even see there, ratification by member governments established the International Bank for Reconstruction and Development, later part of the World Bank Group. And so, did Britain would give birth to the World Bank? And what else did they give birth to? IMF. Can you see that? This, this led to what was called the Bretton Woods System for International, Commercial, and Financial Relations. So question, friends. Bretton Woods, do you think it has anything to do with final events? Yeah. Yes. In other words, what I'm saying is, the mission of Bretton Woods was to fulfill Revelation 13, verse 17, in a degree. Not completely, but to set the stage for the papacy when the, when the Sunday law is in force to control that the money would be able to be controlled. How much, you go, how much goes out your pocket, how much comes in your pocket, how you spend, to know everything, how you spend every penny, every, every rand. So what I'm saying, the Bretton Woods Conference as the team that was to set the stage for the Sunday law, that was in 1944. But I'm suggesting to you, beloved, that in 2022, their goal of 1944 is now going to start becoming reality. It's going to start becoming reality. Now, friends, I'm not setting, someone says he's setting time. Let me ask you this. If you're watching a man and he got, you, you see that there's, there's a 10 packets of apples. 10 pack, you got 10. Now, the man can't carry. He's only going to carry two at a time. And it takes him one minute down the stairs to put it on his bucket truck and one minute up the stairs. If you watch him, how long will it take for him to take all 10 packets into his van? 20, one minute down, one minute up, and he got, and he got 10 packets. 20, 20. <laughs> every two packets, every two packets, two minutes. Two, two at a time. Yeah. Two. <laughs> yes, I explained that, right? Now, are you time setting now? Because you watched, uh, you have observed something. Is that time setting? That's not time setting. You're just calculating what's the obvious, right? So if the Bible predicts something and the men were to fulfill it or giving you a date, is that time setting? It's not time setting. The Bible says it's going to come to pass, and the powers that be telling you, at this year we want it to come to pass. You're just observing, and you're just saying according to them. Yes, the Bible says it, but this is how, long, how, how quick they wanted. That's not time setting. You're just revealing the facts. You're revealing the facts. So let us listen to the managing director. By the way, the, let me say this. We're not going to get into it now. 
but the previous managing i don't know why they do this but it's always females i don't know why but the previous managing director was a female do you know she was charged she was charged for corruption so what i'm saying is all these organizations whether world economic forum whether world who all corrupt yeah. all of them are corrupt so let's see what she says the world over the last year i paid a visit to Bretton woods in new hampshire where 44 men signed our articles of agreement in 1944. our founders faced two massive tasks to deal with the immediate devastation caused by the war and to lay the foundation for a more peaceful, more prosperous post-war world. At the conclusion of the conference, John Maynard Keynes captured the significance of international cooperation as hope for the world. If we can continue, the brotherhood of men will have become more than a phrase he said. Pause. Whose words is the one always speaking about the brotherhood of humanity? Papal system, right? So you've seen elements of the papacy here in 1944. Yes. Now, friends, it's very interesting as she keeps speaking. Listen and pay attention. We face what I have called a long ascent for the global economy, a climb that will be difficult, uneven, uncertain and prone to setbacks. But it is a climb up, and we will have a chance to address some persistent problems, low productivity, slow growth, high inequalities, a looming climate crisis. We can do better than build back the pre-pandemic world. We can build forward to a world that is more resilient, sustainable, and inclusive. We must seize this new Bretton Woods moment. Did you hear what she mentioned in talking about a global economy? Did you hear what she said? She, but yes, and what else did she mention? Climate crisis. So can you see, friends, it's linked. This, this is, it's linked to the Sunday law. It's linked to the Sunday law. But let's keep listening. Th that was a hint where the steam's going. Where the steam's going. Yeah. Now, I want you to see, that, now, by the way, that's it, that's it, that's it. Now, they, she's going to give us some insight, which this other lady never gave us in their recent conference. Now, what do they want? I want you to see what they want. Actually, let me tell you what they want. They want a digital... That's what they want. That basically, they don't want any money floating around. A cashless society. And it's very interesting because the question dawned on my mind. Do you know it takes money to move people from money to move them to a cashless society? I'm saying, do you know that it's going to require... Yeah. You, you can't just jump from money and jump to a whole new system. It takes money because you have to pay people to organize this. It costs a lot of money. Thanks you for the question. Who do you think is the greatest for, 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 for yeah. philanthropist? that wants to help the world. I'm going to show you Bill Gates. He actually said that he needs to help the world because they, they poor people, they don't use banks and it's so hard, they put in their money. He actually said under their mattress, we need to help these people get their money into the bank. So I'm investing my money for them to get them off the paper money. I want them into the system. I want them into the system, but I'm getting there. Now, that's where they can control you. Yes, yes. By the way, do you know that India is one of the biggest now that has actually shifted from money? India is now moving on a card system. Do you know that? Do you know who funded all that? Bill Gates. Bill Gates funded it. He funded it. Eh? Yes, 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 yes. Yes, he actually mass murdered them. You actually poor, yes. Some of them died, some of them crippled, some of them distorted through his vaccines. That's what he done. Yeah. Now, I want you to see, she's going to, it's a bit lengthy, friends, but let's just listen to her. 
We are at a historic turning point. You, young or not so young, doesn't matter, but bold entrepreneurs gathered here today, you are not just inventing new services, you are reinventing the history of money. You're drawing a completely new future, actually. And we are all in the process of adapting. A new wind is blowing, and it is that of digitalization. And in this new world, we meet anywhere, anytime, as they said. And surprise, surprise, the town square is back. Back on your smartphone. We exchange information, services, even emojis, instantly, peer-to-peer, person-to-person. We float through a world of information where data is the new gold, despite growing concerns about privacy, about cyber attacks. A world in which millennials are reinventing how our economy works, phone in hand. And this is key. Money itself is changing. We expect it to become more convenient, more user-friendly, perhaps even less serious-looking. We expect it to be integrated with social media, readily available for online and person-to-person -person use, including micropayments. And of course, we ex expect it to be cheap, safe, protected against criminals and prying eyes. So, what role will remain for cash in this digital world? There are already signs in some shop windows. Cash not accepted. And it's not just in Scandinavia, the poster child of a cashless world. In various other countries too, demand for cash is decreasing, as is shown in our IMF work. And in 10, 20, 30 years' time, who will still be exchanging those pieces of paper called checks? Okay, did you get what's the IMF goal through our speech? Digital cashless, cashless society. I believe even here in South Africa, checks are no more. I don't know if it's... Yeah. I, I know the bank sent me an email some time back. They said we no, they're no more dealing with checks. Yeah. That they predicted a couple she would be prior. That she say a time's coming, no more checks. No more checks, but they actually want a what society? Cashless society. Do you think this year will fulfill? Pro Do you think it becomes now? Uh, does this fit Bible prophecy? Yes. yes. Yeah. Cashless society. This is what they want now. It's about to get juicy. We have come to the most friends. You know when you're eating a mango? <laughs> we are coming to that part now. <laughs> that, Sharif, you want to see this, brother? <laughs> this is that sweet part. <laughs> you want to see it? <laughs> I want us to see now. There's, there, there's, the, there's the, friends, look at him properly. <laughs> look at him properly. <laughs> look at him properly. <laughs> the man's going to sell them out. He's about to sell them out. Listen and pay attention. Yeah, yeah, he's, yeah, yeah, what he says. By the way, this says they are meeting, right? The, 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 big, the big people are there. And what I'm going to do, after he speaks, I want an analyst, a man that studies this movement. I thank God the Lord directed me to some of these, these stuff. So they are men that actually study, like they sit and watch them. They, they don't know what we know, but they know they're up to no good. So the analysts, they watch them like after the soccer match. Remember, we should watch soccer. Then you'll hear after the soccer, you, there's, 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 there's people speaking, right? To tell you what went wrong, what, what. So after this, I'm going to play a man that's going to analyze every word that comes out of his mouth. All right. Let us, let us see what he says. Now, in all our analysis on CBDC, in particular for the use of general, to the general use, uh, we tend to establish the equivalence with cash. Uh, and there is a huge difference there. Uh, for example, in cash, uh, we don't know, for example, who is using a $100 bill today. We don't know who is using a 1,000 peso bill today. Does it, does it tell your business who is using what and how they use? So why are you saying they, we don't know? They want to control it. They want to control it. 
Uh, a key difference in, with the CBDC is that central bank will have absolute control on the rules and regulations that will determine the use of that uh, expression of central bank liability. And also we will have the technology to enforce that. Those, are, those two issues are extremely- did, did you hear what the man said, friends? We will have the technology to enforce it. How you gonna spend your money and when you spend your money? Oh, friends. Important, and that makes a huge difference with respect to what, she, to what cash is. Uh, 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 therefore, I think it, this, this lends itself to design carefully CBDC in such a way that they will not be a vehicle for fragmentation, for uh, financial instability, uh, and, and for spillovers. Therefore, I, I, I don't think that by, the, by themselves, C CBDC is a threat to the international uh, monetary system. Uh, for example, in the issue of currency substitution, if, uh, if, if uh, an advanced economy issues a CBDC and somebody in a third country wants to, to use it, it requires, it will require the consent of the central bank of the residence of that person. Uh, therefore, the, the, the degree of control will be fa far bigger. Now, this, I think it's, a, it's good news because I think that it really, it really provides the ground for us to think on how can we use CBDC to, to really obtain these higher objectives of facilitating payments internationally. How are we going to, to make them to reduce costs, to, to, to enhance inclusion, uh, how are we going to, to make this route uh, run smoothly? That is something that so far we haven't achieved. Uh, there are many efficiency gains that can be captured, and uh, I think our concentration should be so there. So he mentions afterwards inclusiveness, and he wants to help everyone to make things more better for you. But it's not better for you. They control it. They're gonna, don't you say that if, if what he's saying, the vision comes to pass, that few of these men will control everybody's buying and selling. Yes. And then what Ellen White say, a few men will seek to cross all the world. She says a few men will combine to cross all the means to be obtained in certain lines of businesses. And then obviously she goes on about trade unions. I'm not gonna read that. But question, if they're gonna do this to cross all the means, then what should we do, red words? My warning is, keep out of the cities. Because if you're in the cities, you're gonna be dependent upon them. You're gonna be dependent upon them. You're still on the system. Now, I'm gonna watch, make us watch the, an the analyst. This mind's gonna actually analyze everything that he actually said. Yes. What's yes. they have control of your money. Yes. It means it's no longer really your money. It's not your money at all. But you, 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 it's not your money because they determine how you spend that money. Yeah, it's not, it's not, it's not. Now there's that, there's the guy now. This, this brother's good. I want you to hear what he says. Issues of central bank digital currencies, and he uses hundred dollar bills or a thousand peso notes as his example. And he says, let me explain some differences here. He says, problem with the hundred dollar bill is. We don't know who's using it. We don't know what they're spending it on. We, you know, we're just, you know, we're in, we're in the dark. And then he says, but with central bank digital currencies, oh, we keep track of every penny. We know where every penny is. And and this is even better. The, the, it's somebody in a recipient country. So if somebody in America wants to spend their money in Canada, the Canadian bank can just decline the transaction, basically. They have to consent to the transaction for it to go through. And he says in this way, because central banks, you know, you have to require their consent. We can implement all sorts of policies that achieve higher objectives. And then he goes on. It's like, well, higher objectives, like what? And one of one, one of them is efficiency, and that's that's always one they cite. Like, oh, we're doing this to for your convenience. But then he says, oh, we're also doing it for. I think it was words like inclusion and diversity, and you know, the whole green stuff. And it's like, oh my God, these guys are using their currency. They're using your money to implement God only knows whatever policies they have in mind or whatever the flavor of the month is. And he's all excited about this. And then there's a couple there's a couple of people speak in between. And then Powell says, hey man, whoa, whoa, whoa. You know, Powell 
this guy he cut his teeth. He's a lawyer. Powell cut his teeth at a law firm called Davis Polk and Wardell, one of the top 10 most profitable law firms on a per equity partner basis forever. It's a big white shoe conservative law firm. Powell's like, wait, 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 man. Well, you know, there may be some some really good things about central bank digital currencies, but there's a lot of legal issues here, like, you know, your security uh, you know, and hacking and, and privacy. And he sort of throws a bone like there's an issue of privacy, which, of course, there is. I don't really think that's what he's worried about. But Powell, my point is Powell recognizes that what Carson's is wading into is it's a very slippery slope from – you know, you're implementing your policy to you're writing outright law and you're superseding the laws of the U.S. and you're positioning us, the Federal Reserve. You know, we can't just do whatever we want, Carson's. OK, the Fed's got legal limits, maybe that other countries don't because the U.S. has the Constitution. I mean, if it gets too far out of line, you're going to force a big legal issue. And the powers that be don't want that. And Powell understands that and Carson's does not. But it was a very interesting exchange between those two. Basically, the lawyer guy is the one that actually works with the Federal Reserve Bank. So when that other fetish brother spoke, he was trying to say, hey, don't, don't, don't speak like that. Like, uh, he's like, like almost backing out to say, we're not a part of that. But that's a lie. They're all in it together. Yeah, it's just he's afraid that they, yeah, they don't, they, it's, it's, it's just too soon. It's too soon. So he backtracked to say, yeah, 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 I, I'm, I'm just questioning what you say. He's not really questioning it because they wouldn't be having the meeting live or if they're not on, on, on agreement. They're not in agreement. So th that's where we're ending. That's, that's where we're going, friends. And that's why Ellen White says, for this reason, Blue Words, I see the necessity of the people of God, what? Moving out of the cities into retired countries. So we can cultivate the land and raise their own provision. And then Black Watch says, I see the necessity of making haste to get all things ready for the crisis. So what he's saying is because that, that crisis is coming, we need to make haste. Now, I'm not going to play this video. It's a bit lengthy and that guy is a bit boring. But what I'm going to tell you, this is what he says. He concludes and he says, everyone must have like a digital. This, this is a part of the agenda, a part of international monetary funds. Everyone must have a digital kind of ID. Not, not, no more this ID that we have, but almost like a digital type of ID that will allow you access. With, it's almost like this COVID passport, very similar to the COVID passport. So that's a part of the agenda where there's no moving, where your ID will have everything on it, your digital one, all the information about you, everything that is necessary for them to know about you. Wherever you're going, you'll have to produce this, maybe on your phone or however they, they want it, you're going to have to produce it. And that's what he spoke about, but it's a bit lengthy. I'm going to skip that. I'm going to skip that. Now, my question is, <laughs> you saw the face. <laughs> Who do you think is going to help fund the world? Because the, the, world, the countries don't have money to move from money to go digital. It's, it's going to require money. I want you to see who's, 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 who's the one funding this thing. I don't need to tell you that the poor have been unbanked for as long as there have been banks. Why is this time different? Well, it's really the, the digital revolution. Uh, the poorest have you know, bought cows, stored gold, uh, uh, put currency under their mattress. Uh, but uh, they are getting cell phones. And the cell phone capability of identifying who's using the cell phone, uh, let, letting you look at your spending patterns, uh, that's going to be common sense. Uh, people are going to have help and lots of innovative products competing on top of this digital currency platform. So if technology, mobile phones, for example, digital money helps to increase access to financial services at the same time as it lowers the cost of delivery, why is philanthropy needed? Uh, philanthropy should just be here to bootstrap this. Uh, there are a lot of regulations in this area, and understanding how those regulations can make the cost of remittances, where you're sending money back to your uh, family and your country of origin, uh, how right now that has about a 5% overhead on it. Uh, we think we have a role to make sure that, particularly for the smaller transactions, the regulations don't impose 
uh, those very high costs. Once this gets going, then we'll step up to the applications and say, okay, what is, uh, how, do, how does a savings application help the mother make sure money's focused on the kids? How does it help them stay in school, you know, set money aside for the uniform or, or for uh, good future planning? Some of you can hear what he's saying. We're going to help the world, help the mother when she sends money wherever. Whatever she says must get spent for that, we make sure to this digital country and it has to be spent for that. Don't you think then, if, okay, use that as a scapegoat and then when the real thing comes for what they're planning it for, then we, 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 you can't spend it, any cent you can't spend. So he's saying the reason why we want to do it, because if a mother's somewhere else far in another place, she's working and she wants to send money back home, and she, there's so much interest, yeah. there's so much dust, and the money can be used for wrong things she never sent it for, so we're going to make the digital currency that when she sends it, they cannot use the money any other way, except as she said it must be used. Yeah. Oh, uh, you see now, so uh, under a, 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 a um, like a, yes, like the papacy, you are appearing for something that appears so good. Oh, he wants to help the human race. But behind the scene, he's planning to make sure you do exactly what we say just now. Otherwise, you can't buy yourself. These are parts of the system. Now, friends, I, I'm shifting gears, then I'm closing. Not shifting gears, but I just want us to see. Now, what I'm going to say, which other... Which, which system openly we know now, besides these, that is openly pushing for this great reset, this, warm, this new economic order, you own nothing and you're happy. It's, it's America, but it's a name of a... So, sorry? The World Economic Forum, right? They're the ones that are actually pushing for this thing. So what I'm going to say, friends, I, I'm, I'm just going to tell you that the World Economic Forum... World Economic Forum is a part of this whole thing as well. Now, what I'm going to suggest to you is this. In 2019, I think it was. Let me check the date. What date is there? I've got no date. Or 2020. What happened in 2020? There was actually a meeting and in England now. In England. And in this meeting, they were asking, let's read it, let's read it. Let's read it. It says here, Bank of England. Is this a small bank? No. The Bank of England governor signals central bank digital currency is coming. So this was July 15, 2020. So now, friends, we're going to have to link the dots here. You might think this has just thrown people just, oh, digital, digital banks just jumping up. Let's go digital. We're going to have to link some dots. I'm going to show us. Uh, I, I don't know the name now, I forget it, but it's accessor or something like that. I'm going to show you now. Let's first read this article before we start linking dots. All right? So what the governor is saying, the Bank of England, the governor, signals that basically that it's possible, it's coming, that they're going to move to digital currency. No more going to use paper money. It's going, the bank's going digital. Now it says here, yeah, uh, we are looking at the question of should we create a Bank of England digital currency? Well, go on looking at it. Oh, sorry, we'll go on looking at it. As it does have huge implications on the nature of payments and society. Then he says, I think in a few years' time, we will be heading towards some sort of digital currency. So what does he say? A few years couple of years expected, right? The digital currency issue will be a very big issue. I hope it is. Because that means COVID will be behind us. So what's also helping the world move to a digital COVID? COVID, why COVID? Because they say money, money the, the, the so-called the, the disease, it's going from the money, you get, carry the money, then you get the disease. So we need to go digital. So, so, so you can be safe from the next pandemic, maybe Mr. Gates is going to say. So you, yes, that's the scapegoat. So this was in July 2020. I'm now showing us August, because when these men say a few years, don't believe them. It's around the corner. August 5th, 2020. Bank of England 
on course to begin rollout of new payment system. What year? 2022. Last week it was announced by the Bank of England that they had appointed, what's that name? Now, can we link the dots now? Do you know Accenture is basically, it's a company that's going to help the Bank of England take away their money and set up, it's like a company, that's going to set up a digital system, a, a platform, a digital platform of mon money. Link the dots now. There's the name, yeah? Now we need to see who is these people or who are they in bed with? Let's see. <laughs> it says a professional service company as they are technology delivery partner for the renewal of the UK's real-time gross settlement payment system. So basically, these are the tech guys that are going to set it up, right? Now, let's go to the article and it keeps going on. It says, first, aside from their newfound relationship with the Bank of England, Accenture is a strategic partner of the World Economic Forum. Are you linking the dots now? And it's, yes, it says that it's been for, for, the, for at least for 20 years. So can you see who's behind this also, the World Economic Forum? And what yet is Bank of England going digital? 2022. Is that, uh, as, as, okay, I'm not going to say the whole world, but as their vision of 1944 now becoming a reality. It's going to start in England. It has, it's in other places like India, another, a few other nations. Yes, also China is moving towards that. Term. After this pandemic, they pushed a lot to that way. So. 2020, their vision of 1944 is coming to reality. It says here, yeah, this is the same World Economic Forum that is pushing, oh, all right, you can see that, the concept of the Great Reset in the areas of e economy, society, geopolitics, the environment, and technology. You know what the environment is climate, right? So 2022, their vision is coming to pass. Now what I want us to see is interesting. Like you couldn't, you couldn't even, uh, ish, what's the words? But as this is transitioning, unbelievable friends, unbelievable at the same time as the world is pushing towards a digital, digital currency, 2022, unbelievable. Europe, the entire Europe is pushing towards Sunday law. Like, how, how can that be? Unless, this is it. This is it. I want you to see this article. Well, I'm going to read a few articles. It says, Croatia heading towards work-free Sunday. This was September 21st, 2020, Croatia week. It says, Croatia is he heading towards a work-free Sunday in the direction of, of all EU countries where Sunday working in shops is restricted. Gov government spokes spokesman Marco, you can see that, confirmed that a law to regulate Sunday working was in preparation, taking into account the balance between work, rest, spending time with family. So they're saying that we have to have a Sunday rest. People can't be working themselves and dying. They need to rest. And it's not yet mock of the peace because there's no worship there. It's just saying you need to rest. That's all. Just rest. Just rest. But let's keep going. It says regulating and restricting Sunday working is also in line with the directive of work-life balance. So they're regulating and restricting, obviously, your movements on Sunday. Adopted by European Parliament last year which has to be incorporated, listen to this, into the national legislation of EU countries by, I'm not making this up, they're telling you the EU countries by 2022 must enforce this by law. They say legislation, legislation, not, not, not the mark of the beast, but towards the mark of the peace because it's just one step closer. 
It's only once they say, worship, then mark of the beast. Friends, I couldn't believe this. And then, again, work-life balance. This is what we read about, work-life balance, the red words. So this is the work-life balance, right? Now, I don't know, okay, let's read this. Then I'm going to tell you who's behind. What's, what's the work-life balance? What society is this? But let's read the bottom first. It says, the directive, which was passed by the European Parliament in April 2019. That was, um, you are before, yeah? So it says, entered into force on the 1st of August 2019. Member states now have how many years left to do it? Three years to adopt the laws. 2022. So by 20, this is what the, the, the countries of Euro, the European countries only have a couple, this, this year left, by next year, the Sunday, the Sunday law must be enforced. Not worship, I'm not saying mark of the peace, but I'm saying Sunday law. Where by law now you have to rest Sunday. At the same time. Yes? <laughs> family, yes, it's going to start family, but then it's going to go worship. That's where it's going. That's where it's going. Friends, what more can we say? What more can we say? Oh, thank you. I missed this. It says the work life balance. I'm reading this top here. Directive which aims to improve families, ex access to families, leave, and flexible work arrangements has entered. Now, take note who is behind this thing in, into European Union law. The unions are behind us. Did Ellen White, was Ellen White a prophet? Because how did she know this is going to happen? She says the trade unions will be one of the agencies that will bring upon this earth a time of trouble such as was, such as not been since the world began. The time is first coming when controlling power of labor unions will be very oppressive. Yeah, because, friends, you know when they toy toy. You, you know the roads blocked. You can't go nowhere. Tires are burning. Sometimes they put you in the tire and <laughs> throw it on you. <laughs> so what I'm saying, friends, we need to get ready. Because we don't, 2022 is around the corner. It's around the corner. It's ra rapidly. Look at this so innocent video of the commerce. Listen to, uh, friends, this thing cannot be so clear. What, just listen. Short clip. Listen to this young lady. Hi, my name is Alix and I'm policy advisor at COMESE, which is the commission of the Bishops' Conference of the European Union. With the COVID-19 pandemic, many people are suffering from poverty and loneliness. This is why we need fraternity more than ever. We need to care for each other, for we are all members of one human family. This is why at COMESE we are committed to promote Sunday as a common weekly day of rest in the European Union. A day that gives time for family and spiritual life. A day uh, to experience social friendship and fraternity. Are you seeing that, friends? That was not quite what's true. A young, this came, I think this week, last week, she came out and she spoke. Kamas came out, she went and she spoke before the camera. Friends, it's clear Sunday law is coming. It's very clear it's coming. It's very, very clear. Friends, I don't know if I can still say this now. I, I don't know if I can read this here. If it's still Sunday movement, there's no more making its way in darkness. We can now see it in the lights. Friends, time is almost finished. We must get ready. We must get ready. We must get ready. I'm going to pray. We're going to close now. Yeah. Is there any final comments? If not, I'm going to pray. Any final comments? Nothing? Okay. I'll pray. Sorry? You are stunned. Yeah, I was stunned myself when I saw this yesterday. So, truly, friends, what, what, what uh, it was shocking. As I, and friends, God just, I never even go, God to, he dropped it on my lap and says, Look at this information. We, it, it's a, that's why a great work in a little time. Friends, it's, we, you know when the, when the children of Israel went to and looked at the walls of Jericho, how will we drop this wall? It was an impossibility. Then God still tells them, 
how you drop this wall? Just walk around, blow trumpets. <laughs> walk around, what, Lord? Blow trumpets, look at the wall. <laughs> God used simple means to perform great things. All he wants is a surrendered heart. All he wants is a surrendered heart. Friends, let us pray. And yeah, we can pray. Let's bow our heads. Loving Father, we are truly thankful for your spirit that has been with us. We are truly thankful for this day. Truly, we have been blessed by your presence. We have been blessed by your word. Thank you so much, Lord, for being our teacher, our guide. And thank you for your love, Lord. We know, Lord, you are sending these things to show us that the crisis is before us, not because you hate us, but because you love us and you want us to get ready. Father, we all acknowledge, Lord, there are defects of character which need to be recti rectified, need to be overcome. We need to surrender, Lord. Please help us, Father, to be so submitted to you that when you speak, we would, be, we would obey you, Lord. Please, Father, we ask that every heart, everyone that has bowed before you, all that are viewing this, that every one of us would be saved into your kingdom, that we would all be a part of that number who would receive the seal of God. Please, Father, bless us all. Thank you so much for the time you could spend studying, and please help us this week to draw ever closer to you. Please, Father, we are truly, truly thankful for what you have done for us this day. Please continue to abide with us, Lord, and even now, we know the sun's about to set, but we, ask, we ever ask, Father, that the Son of Righteousness, Jesus, would never set in our hearts, but he would just become brighter and brighter. Please, Lord, abide with us now as we begin a new week, and please keep us by your grace, for we ask all these mercies humbly. In Jesus' name, amen. Someday the silver cord will break, and I know more. Now she'll sing, but all the joy when I shall wake within the palace of the king, and I shall see him face to face and tell the story.